This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on Earth as a system in terms of the interacting spheres and all the dynamic complexities of this planet and looking at one topic in particular, feedback. And what is feedback? What is an equilibrium? And how a system can change due to feedback and the different classifications of this topic. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Earth is one big system. Now, what is a system? A system is a combination of interacting parts that work together and function together to create an output, a result, a product. And the process will be how the machine or the system works in terms of its interacting pieces or components. And you'd have a set of inputs that produce the process or process and then the output which is the eventual functionality of the system so earth is one big complex and diverse system which does change over time from the origins and formation of our planets through the different changes in the atmosphere in organic life in the biotic components in terms of the physical earth changes and events that have happened over a long 4.6 billion year lifespan, the system is in place based on its spheres and interacting components which make up the process. Feedback, which is our focus of this video, is the changes to a system and what happens to a system when feedback is incorporated and the different types of feedback that happen within a system. When talking about a system and in regards to the earth as a system, we have to discuss a term, a very important term called equilibrium, which basically means balance. There's e equality, there's some sort of equal state or balance that is currently active within a system. Could be as simple as like a seesaw where both sides are balanced or it could be a temporal or time aspect where over a short time the system is in equilibrium which is the balance of the system which can be formed or created based on the functionality of the components that make up the system as a whole and things are working as planned and efficiently and the output is consistent. So equilibrium is a very important term to understand and know when discussing about systems and about feedback. Feedback is defined as a change or a modification or a stress or stressor applied to the system and there will be a definitive effect on that system because of the feedback applied. Now there's two types of feedback. There's negative and positive. And don't think about this as a spoken word English or sports analogy of feedback being good or bad. Think of it as the changes to a system in a negative and positive way in terms of the effect or changes to the equilibrium of that system caused by the feedback. For example, negative feedback is defined as a temporary change to the system and then the system will go back after the change has stopped, go back to the original equilibrium or steady state. Compared to the positive feedback definition, which is more of a permanent change, the feedback is more permanent, stronger or longer lasting, that forces the system to change and not go back to the original equilibrium or steady state. It goes to a new equilibrium and changes. That system is now changed permanently. So there's negative feedback, which is temporary and goes back to equilibrium. And there is positive, which is a change. The change is strong enough that the system cannot go back to its original equilibrium. A great example of a negative feedback loop would be the deciduous trees in certain latitudes where they would lose their leaves in the fall or autumn and then grow back the leaves in the spring. And this annual cycle of growing the leaves and losing the leaves is a good is an example of a negative feedback where it goes back to the equilibrium. Another negative feedback loop would be the sea ice around the Arctic would grow 
and develop and get larger in the winter and the cold months. And in the summer months, it would melt and retract and get smaller in the warmer months. So that constant cycle through the year based on the amount of sunlight and temperature, the growth and loss of sea ice. A positive feedback loop would be if a tree is unfortunately cut down, that tree is then used to make wood chippings or furniture or something else. That tree never goes back to being a tree again once it's cut down. So this is a force or movement away, which is permanent away from the equilibrium. That tree is never a tree again. And sticking with trees and forests, you've got a forest fire. This could be an example of both a positive and negative feedback loop because you're looking at the difference in time. You're looking at a short time in a few minutes or seconds of the fire burning through, you would say that there's a positive feedback loop of the forest being completely changed and not being or not going back to its equilibrium. Or you could say if you extend the time and look at months or years after the fire, you would say that the regrowth of the forest would be a negative feedback loop. So the time aspect and temporal perspective is important to include in your analysis of whether it's a negative or positive feedback loop. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.